You're back for the second episode of this session of Poker Time. That is famous poker vlogger, Matt Vaughn. I don't know, famous, but he's a poker vlogger. I mean, he's more famous than most of you. So, so most of you, you? The audience. Oh, that's a weird. Way. I thought you were just talking to me, and when he said most of you, it was throwing me off. I was like, is that like all the microbes in me? It's more famous than most of them, but I have some very famous microbes also. Your left pinky Mike. is quite notable. <laughs> Thank you. The one you accidentally touched Queen Elizabeth with in 1987. Has 14,000 Twitter followers. My left pinky. <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> hey. We said at the same time. Hey, this is a nothing flop to start the episode off with. As you can see, BMW Blake not having a great session and has not reloaded, it looks like. Only yeah. 425 in front of him. So it's going to continue with the best hand. and This I should definitely really be the end of it. Yeah. It's over quickly. Stuart wearing fashionable Happy black. Mr. Fashion over here. Right. Stuart? Yeah. You. <laughs> you got a job working for Vogue? I mean, Teen Vogue. Did you see The Devil Wears Prada and, and it was like a moneymaker moment for you? You were like, I'm going to be in fashion. I actually have seen The Devil Wears Prada. I've read the book as well. It's quite good. And did this, this subsequent thing happen? Not that I would much. <laughs> it was inspiring, okay? <laughs> Meryl Streep is fantastic in that movie, by the way. She's always fantastic. She is really good, though. Hey, it's the rooster. Here comes the rooster. <laughs> he didn't say it. He'll, he'll say it. Just give him a chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll say it for him in the meantime. Hey, the Battle of Ace Jacks. That one has got an interesting decision here. He could very reasonably call this. Looks like he's going to go for the three bet. Yeah, play. I think that's probably he's the better squeeze. decision. He can fold out. Uh, well, I don't really know what better hands he can fold out. I don't know if he can, but he, it makes it a lot easier to play post flop and yeah. gives him a lot more wins. Yep. You just fold out at a chop, and it turns out he's just going to take it down. That is one of the really nice things about this hand. And if he gets one caller, he gets to play a bloated pot in position, which is pretty good. Yep. Of course, when he gets. Re raise the cries and folds quickly. Or do you think it's in his arm pocket? That little zipper pocket on the arm? Yeah, no, I see it. It's clearly s'mores. I was thinking it could be gummy bears or maybe just a picture of a gummy bear. I saw someone tweet actually about um, gummy bears and he said if, if gummy bears and gummy worms, worms are to scale, it's a r gu the gummy world is a terrifying place. <laughs> Yeah, the worms would be really big. That's, that's, no, that's correct. This is a, a DM5 style open under the gun. It seems loose. It's not loose at all for DM5. He would open a lot worse oh, hands. Yeah. Ivan, coming off of a three bet in the last hand, picks up aces this time against the stickiest player, I would say, at the table. Yeah, but DM5 knows this, this hand is a trouble hand in this situation, I think. I imagine he'll find a fold. I'd say he does like to call a lot. Oh, man. This is, I, this is, I mean, that's I mean, just not a very good call. DM5 calls with, like, way worse hands for almost as much money all the time. But situationally, so. this is just a very bad hand to have. Sure. Well, he picks up uh, a gutter to go with his yeah. overs. This is the type of board that he might raise if, if Matt Vaughn yeah. continues. Let's see if Matt Vaughn does continue. Uh, DM5's hand is a little bit defined because he called the three bet. But DM5 less so than most. And I like this check back. I by think this Matt. is a, a good board based check back. That's a great card for Matt Vaughn. DM5 yep. could have hit a king, first of all. And of course, Matt picks up the nut flush draw. Not a great card for DM5 here. Although he is going to take a shot with his. Uh, I don't know gutter. if this is a shot taken card here. Matt Vaughn has a lot of ace king in his range that checks back the flop. He doesn't have almost any flushes in his range, though. And that's so good. That's a reason for DM5 to take a shot here. Turns out Matt does have the ace of hearts in his hand, but very rarely is he going to have ace x of hearts here since he didn't bet the flop. Matt has an easy call, of course. If the deuce of spades comes on the river and DM5 bets again, Matt's going to have an interesting decision between calling and raising. Well, Ooh, instead, DM5 somehow has the best hand. This is absurd. It is a crazy three-outer. Just a crazy three-outer to come. Well, Matt, I don't think it was going to be really hard for you to find a way to win this pot, at least. That's the good it's news. It's possible he could win with a raise, but I don't think he's going to go for that. I don't know why he would. this board texture. He's beating King X. He's beating King Queen and things like that. Do you think DM5 is betting King Queen? Oh, not on this board. You're right. Not on this board. 
DM5 is really representing a straight or better here. Let me bet again. He could have a set, I suppose. I guess. I don't expect Matt to raise, but you're right. He could raise. Could take a shot. It wouldn't be a great story because of the flop check. Exactly. He decides to call because of the opponent, I think. DM5 being a guy who has a lot of moves. Oh, and Matt cannot help but show the aces. Oh, a little bit of tilt there, eh, Matt? Spiteful, bitter vlogger. That there is a is. smile of sadness. Look at the eyes. Yeah. Look at the eyes. Oh, yeah. Sadness. You can, you can put all the makeup you want on that, Matt. We see the, the pain. <laughs> Just, oh, here's the King of Wings. As you see, DM5 and the Rooster are doing fabulous. BMW Blake, the only guy who's really taking it on the chin so far. Of course, Mo also took it on the chin. Yeah. He's long gone. He'd be, he's, he's been gone for a, a while. Yeah. That shirt being so yellow, the hoodie, really works with the name The Rooster as well. It's amazing. The whole, I mean, honestly, the shaved head, it all fits together perfectly <laughs> for the nickname The Rooster. He's always had the shaved head. I know, but I'm saying with the name. We got all right. a four for Bill and a gut shot for DM5, and that's it. Yeah. Bill bets 15 and DM5 with a very reasonable call and jumps into the lead. Yep, not a comfortable lead, but it is a lead. And this should probably just go check, check. Let's see if looks like Bill does not make a weird bet on the river. I have another guess for what Matt Vaughn might have in his pocket. Yeah. Picture of JFK riding a jet ski. <laughs> that is a guess. You're right. Yeah. What if I'm right? What I'll do I win? Do I get, do I get, do I get the picture? A thousand dollars of the picture, whichever is worth more. Okay. About that. The picture is probably worth more. So Matt will have to lose that picture. Yeah. Yeah. That's good for me. It saves me a thousand bucks too. Yeah. I like that. All right. I have a, I have another guess All for right. what's in there. Uh, an Atari 2600. Mm, seems like game the, console. I don't think you understand dimensions and sizes of things. Well, in this universe, the poker time universe. Yeah. It could be different. You know how those uh, clown cars are, right? They just yeah. keep coming out. I know all about that. <laughs> they just keep on coming out. So how do they like do it? He's got that clown car physical universe jacket situation just the pocket doesn't have to be the whole jacket i don't know why you're making this into more than it is we've got a pretty nothing flop for these two hands yeah, yeah they know all about the rooster <laughs> it's a gutter now for the rooster but dm5 makes the best hand as it seems he continually does in this session and the rooster's going to take a shot and get called just a little bit too late on that one there, Rooster. Yeah, I feel like that's a check back spot with Ace High. With yeah, um, you're you're getting called by all pairs, right? Yeah. And other Ace Highs that have you beat are probably raising preflop anyway. Exactly. So it's kind of not there's not really much value in that bet. We might have a game theory disaster bet there. DM5, look at that 65%, and he is the leading money winner. It's so hard to do that. Matt Vaughn and his s'mores at 12%. The rest of us might not add up. And uh, BMW Blake 55. He's the biggest loser, though. So the biggest one, the biggest loser, are playing the most hands. That's not shocking. No, that goes that way a lot. Well, Timmer a not having his greatest session. We've but seen, we've seen him, we've seen him dig out of these <laughs> holes we've before. We've seen him go from two hundred bucks to four thousand or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think more, forty-five hundred. And then he immediately played Ooh. the biggest. What is hand Bill? In history. What's what's happened to Bill? Wow, he called six four off yeah. of the uh, under the gun raise of Timmer. I'm not as surprised by DM five. He nope. thinks he can just destroy everybody at the table. At least he's on the button and, and so suited. And he's been kind of right about being able to destroy people post yes. flops. And I mean, he's been getting there a lot. Yeah, too. but no, but he bluffs too. And there's top pair for DM five. Although it's Bill. not not good news for DM five because no. Timmer has top top. Well, currently it's not good news, but let's just give the yeah. board a chance to uh, bail <laughs> to, out to DM five its way to to home. Bill has a gut shot, but lets it go. Digital Dan will also have a gut shot. We'll see what he does. Is this a raise? This Digital looks like a raise. Dan has a pair. He does not have a gut oh, shot. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. doesn't matter because there's a raise incoming. That is a strange raise. I think Timmer could just move in with the stack to pot ratio. I mean, there's no folding with this much money back. That's for sure. There's a spade draw you might want to shut out. Straight draw you might want to shut out. Yeah, there he, he goes. He does move I, in. I think I, I like, like that move, yeah. And this is why it's weird to raise queen three on this board because now DM5 doesn't know what the hell to do. I think he's going to find a call with top pair. That's my guess. I think so, too, but I don't think that's a good line. I agree. I think if you raise this with at this spot, you have to call, right? Because you're raising to deny equity and, and to get value from the draws. 
He's not getting it. Looks an like incredible. he's considering folding. It's though. not like an incredible price that he's getting here. It's an no. okay price. He he just lets it go. Wow. So he just finds out where he's at and gets it gets away from it relatively cheap. I suppose that that works. The problem is on that board texture. Timber's gonna have some hands that DM5 is ahead of. There's combo draws out there. There's nut flush draws out there. Yep, that is correct. That's why I really don't like the raise in the first place. Well, if you're gonna raise, that's why I think you can't fold. Because well, that's of, why it, because I of mean that I think range. you shouldn't raise against that stack depth for that reason because it's, it's mm -hmm. so much more of a likelihood that you're gonna get shoved on. Yep. If Timber had two Kings on there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, if Timur has 2K, I think he's just calling and uh, hoping for a check on the river once yeah. it goes back call on the turn, or check back call on the turn. Oh, man, let me tell you. That your dad, Jeff? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not the real Andre the Giant, but oh. someone that oh. basically... Well, you said, Ooh. okay, Woo. You couldn't have waited Blake's going to limp the 9-8 and get booed by the table for a bad story, apparently. Or whatever, I don't know. A gun. A gun? Okay. I, I, I have given you so, much, so many facts here. Yeah, it's tough here. to shoot with a knife. Game 5 raises. I didn't know He's real down with the, an actual good hand. Yep. Could certainly consider three betting this hand against DM5's range, yeah. especially out of position, small blind. BMW Blake coming along with a very short stack at this point. Top pair for, or middle pair, I should say, for DM5, bottom pair for Blake, and the gut shot for the digital one. And the back door not flush draw. You know why they call him Digital Dan. Because he's sitting next to the roaster! <laughs> yeah, and whoever's sitting next to the rooster gets called Digital Dan. Yeah. It's just how it works. And Dan calls here. It's only 50. He is out of position, but he's got that gut shot to the nuts. And, of course, a club or an ace are good. That's not a good turn card for him. Yeah. I don't imagine DM5 is going to bet. Yeah, he checks it back. And that card will give DM5 a lot of confidence yeah. in his hand. It's going to be an easy call if Dan decides to bluff. Dan doesn't have to bluff here, but he could try and get a medium pair to fold. The question is to go for value or not. This I think is you a, have to. This is thin value. You're trying to get called by 9, 10, jack 10. Mm -hmm. Basically just those hands, right? 8, 9 maybe. Yeah, there's not a whole lot there. It's true. But you almost always have either. Well, usually you have the best hand, right? It's like ace, jack is the only hand you're losing to. Almost always. Unless Dan's super tricky. Which we've seen him be in the past, to be fair. <laughs> true. Dan usually goes for his check raises on the, uh, on the flop and turn, though, not on the river. Dan is oh, going to make the hero call. call. There's DM, some value for you. DM5's reputation got him that call. Yeah. This is another reason why DM5 really has to bet this, is that he's going to have more bluffs here than that's, most people. That's fair. That's a that's a good point. Yeah, DM5 fine. sort of instinctively knows that, I think, and just is like, yep, this is an easy bet. Grant, there haven't been very many uh, spade flushes. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Is that what's going to say that? Thank God. <laughs> we literally were saying that. Explains the quiet <laughs> level. I think I know what Matt Vaughn has in the pocket. I think I figured it out. Mm. He's got the most sour possible warhead, that candy that's really sour. It's called warheads. Okay. And uh, he's afraid to eat it because it's really sour. And he's been carrying it around for years. And he's just waiting for the right moment to build up the confidence to eat the warhead. Is today the day? I guess we'll find out. It might be the day. It might be the day. That'd be exciting. Looks like the rooster's considering a squeeze there, but... With BMW Blake opening in such a short stack, it wouldn't be a good time, and he recognized that. I don't, turns out BMW Blake's opening King 6 yeah. was such a short stack. Here's another great squeeze spot where Matt Vaughn may decide Ace-Jack is just good enough he to might. get in, especially against BMW Blake. I don't know how much he knows about Blake's ranges here, though. If, if Blake has a reload in his pocket, I don't see why he's not reloading if he's going to open hands like this. Yeah. You need to be deeper if you're going to... I mean, it's hard to justify opening King 6 plus 1, but... You certainly need to be deeper to do it. You see how Matt decides to size this here? So he's completely committed yep. to BMW's uh, shove, and it's just not an issue for he's him. He's given himself easy folds against all other players who, if they for some reason decide to four bet. And look at this DM5 going to call wow. with the deuces. By the way, Matt also sized in such a way that if Blake decided to go all in, Matt can still has keeps the action open to re raise. He sized it exactly so he could re raise it, which is mm. kind of great. Yeah. I love that. That is. That is good. Look at this, and now Dan, of course, feels like he has to call also. Yeah. And now we got some set miners, and Timmer might Timmer get fold. weird. I think he should fold, yeah. He's only got 880 in front of him. Probably should have folded fold. in the first place, yeah. but, you know. All right, well. to not get the rest in. If Matt can avoid a deuce or a five, he's probably going to win on the flop. And he does it. That is a pretty good flop for Matt. His opponents could have a queen. Yep. That's really. They don't have too many eights. 
They might call once with nines or tens. He blocks jacks. He has the jack of clubs in his hand that blocks a bunch of club draws. That's good, too. I don't see how Matt doesn't take a shot. I think it's probably like a $300 shot, something like that. He might even be going smaller, it looks like, which I don't mind on this drive aboard. Uh, 260. 260, I think, is the number. And I don't see how these guys can continue. I guess Digital Dan can beat Ace King. And hands and like other, Ace Jack. And some other um, Ace He might ace He might hands. be recognizing the situation pre-flop with Blake being so short and Matt yeah. trying to isolate him. And he makes the call. Okay, well, he's in position, so he gets to see what Matt does on the turn. He still actually has less equity than Matt. Now he has more. That's a good card, although... Any six, any queen, any ace, any jack will do it for Matt. I think Matt needs to continue here because Dan could easily have a hand like nines or tens. I might not put him on a hand of pocket pair under the eight, but I think he has a lot of hands that he has to fold if Matt continues. Honestly, if Digital Dan has a queen, it's a lot of pressure, too, if Matt yeah. continues. If he has king-queen, it's tough, but I think Dan's going to find a call. It might have yeah. to be a triple barrel to get him off a hand like king-queen. Look, Matt, using his time here, that's interesting. I, I would guess he's going to barrel when he uses his time. He's actually just trying to build up the confidence to eat the, the sour candy. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is reaching. It's going to be really tough for Dan now. Looks like he's going kind of small again. 485. Yep. Bit over, a third, bit over a third of the pot. It's very affordable seeming. Boy, it's exactly the kind of size that should get rid of a hand just like Dan has. It probably should get rid of nines and tens also, yeah. which is what it's designed to do, I believe. Not expecting to fold out queens with this sizing. No, maybe uh, setting up a, a river shove sometimes. Although Dan's only would only... I know it'd be 1.2K left, so he could totally shove the river if he gets called, if he wants to. I don't know. The, this isn't going to fold out all of Dan's flush draws on the flop either, which I don't like as much about the sizing. There are some sizings that will fold out hands like 9, 10 of clubs here. He may think that if Dan has a flush draw, no, I guess Dan would just have to be forced to fold it. Gonna, Dan isn't going to move in too often with a flush draw, right? He does let it go. He lets it go. Nice play. Nice. Thanks. Break down. Do you guys want your phones? I do. Just over 14K in the pot. The turn is the four of diamonds. Hey, what is that? Speaking of turn, coming around the mountain? Is oh. that the nitrogen sports poker train? I think they did buy a train recently. If you listen, you can hear its very choo. familiar jingle. Choo. And choo choo. <laughs> Wait, there's the jingle. Nitro, ding, nitro, ding, nitro. Ding, ding. Nitro, nitro, nitro. <laughs> wow, that's the weirdest <laughs> ad ever all of a sudden. Anyway, Nitrogen Sports Poker Room is, uh, you know, they let us do ads like this. They perhaps do. Perhaps because they don't listen to them. Free reign, baby. <laughs> 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 nitro, 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 nitro. Nitro, nitro, nitro. <laughs> and we're back. We saw Matt Vaughn be a little active in the first segment of this episode. We didn't really see him play much in the uh, first episode of this. No, session. he was uh, in his quiet place, his safe place. He was just like, "Come on, Matt, you can, you can fucking do it. You can eat, the, you can eat the warhead, man. You can do it." Today, today is finally when I will become <laughs> the Matt Vaughn that I could always be. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sure. I don't think the denomination you can just down here. Please, please. Yeah. All right. Nothing for anybody here. There's a 10 for Bill and Blake. Bad news for Bill. Also, Blake has the Jack of Diamonds in his hand as well. That's pretty Yeah, he's nice got this him. hand on pretty strong lockdown There's right now. Three outs for Bill. That is not one of them. Bill's going to bet Tiny as a blocker. $10 is bet on the river. He probably just lost an additional $10 is what that did. I, I, guess, I would guess Blake is going to check back the river. I don't know. I don't know if Blake's going to check back the river or not. He might, he might bet small. It's unclear. But it's only $10, so. What, what can you even do with $10 these days? What can you, what can you buy? Can you even buy matches for $10? I don't know. Can you buy... 
No. Any food of any kind? No. For $10? No. <laughs> Can you buy a water? That's it. Any water? No, water's free, man. Oh, when it rains? Yeah. You think that's free? You yeah. don't think we've paid and I want, and I for that? that? From what I had, I wanted more clubs. Wow. I've, I've, I've paid with my blood oath, but does that count? You're paying in so many ways that you don't, you can't even quantify. Hey, look at this. Pre-flop race. Stuart actually tied with DM5. DM5 certainly higher VPIP because he limps a lot. Yeah. Tim are all the way down to 6%. That's that kind seems, of in, that seems low. Seems extreme, but you know we have, they haven't seen that many yeah, the, hands. Yeah, we're still fairs. working with a small sample size. We're like something about like 30 hands. Yeah, 30, 35 hands. Yeah. <laughs> Great words. Here's Stewart's PFR going up right now. Nope. Oh, he limped. Wrong again. What the hell? I don't think I've ever seen Stewart limp. Stewart may just think he can't get it uh, raised through. And Open instead, limp. That is. Yeah. Instead, he's just deciding to. Uh, Manage the pot and try and win a try and just flop a set. There's only one deuce left in the deck though. It's gonna be tough to do it. But all the more glorious when he does it, of course, when he succeeds. Everyone calls. Mostly reasonable hands here. Digital Dan somehow is the worst of it, even though he's the pre flop raiser. Good flop for Stuart, sort of. I mean it's okay. He's not super comfortable when a three comes. That's true. Also, you know, if Dan bets, Dan's got over pairs and things like that. Hey, it's the seven of hearts. That's a good card for the digital one. Yep. It's hard for him to rep too He's many gonna straights. He's going to have to rep like two eights that didn't bet the flop. Yeah, that's tough for him to rep. I guess maybe you could have like ace eight suited. So Stort is maybe, I guess he's protecting his equity. Yeah, I think that's mostly what he's doing. It seems unlikely that anybody has a pair. Yeah. Because a seven likely would have bet the flop and any pair would have likely bet the flop. For most positions, at least. Yeah, Dan almost never has pocket eights here, for right. example. You expect him to have bet the flop there. Dan does call with his flush draw and, and gets there. Wow, and there's a straight on the board Straight now. on the board, so Stuart might convince himself that Dan's trying to get him off of a chop. It's weird, though, to try and think of what does Dan have that he checked the flop, called the turn with, and will be betting the river with. It seems like an eight or better most of the time. Stuart might be thinking about bluffing this river to try and get Dan off of a chop, though. He might... Yep, Flush draw like does make plenty of sense, though, for Dan, at the way he played it. I know. Swords going to bet. And uh, I don't think it's going to work. I, I think... <laughs> I mean, Dan's not going to fold. I, I think know he's that. He's just considering raising, but I don't think he's going to conclude that there's any value in raising. It's possible that Stuart could have something like eight jack of hearts, I guess. Six... But oh, six four hearts isn't good for Dan to, for him to have. Anyway, six eight of hearts... Uh, Jack nine of hearts. It's hard. Stuart limped under the gun. Looks yeah. like, looks like just in case Dan's gonna. I guess there's like uh, King Jack of hearts yeah. in there somehow. But Stuart is almost never gonna limp with that hand. It is problematic. Maybe if Stuart somehow has two eights himself, he may feel like he's he's gonna get call? some calls. I don't know. I mean that's that's what you're going for, yeah. right? It's like, well, I'm I'm trying to act like I'm trying to get you off a chop, and maybe you call with a hand that isn't chopping. Yeah, maybe. That's it. It's close. It's close. Stuart has ace eight with the ace of hearts, which he's never limping under no, the gun. No, and he's with. never he's never playing ace eight off under the gun. Right. That's why. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Somebody's gonna find so it's hard to come up with hands. At the same point, I understand why Dan decided to raise there on a board where on a board where there is a lot of chops and a fair amount of second best hands. The rooster. What the hell? He just folded ace three suited. Rooster smacking those cards into the muck for no reason that we can tell. He's just not feeling it today. Oh. Something has happened. Stuart had uh, all of the outs. And there's bottom pair. And there's Blake middle pair. Zooms ahead. I would expect Stuart's going to call once. Yeah. Stuart checks the flop to bluff catch, and there is no bluff catching, as it turns out. Just getting value. I don't know. I think uh, Blake may have missed an opportunity for thin value on that river. I agree. I think 7-8 is not a bet, but King-7 is a bet mm -hmm. in that exact situation. Yep. If Stuart has a 10, he's betting anyway. Yep. Hard to come up with too many hands that Stuart could have that he could bluff. I guess 8-9. Yeah. That's about it. But he probably is going to bet 8-9 on that flop anyway, honestly. It's a gutter. <coughs> Dan's smiling a little bit right now because he's thinking about Mr. Potato. 
head. Mr. Potato? Mr. Potato Head. That's what I meant to say. Why is he thinking about that? I don't know. He just often thinks about Mr. Potato Head and smiles. Why Why does that bring him joy? Does, it, does Mr. Potato Head not bring you joy? No. Not at all. Does he bring you fear? I Not fear, just disgust and avarice. So Th this is a potato who all his entire function is to disguise himself, to trick people. So oh, oh, now I have eyes. Now I have different ears. Who am I today? How has this not come up before, you being so passionate about anti-Mr. Potato Head? I'm, of course, I, this is, I don't even understand what we're talking about right now. Like, is, does not everyone feel this way? Is Mr. Potato Head a big, no one, no one like gets Mr. Potato Head anymore because everyone understands that that's not okay. Hey, anyway, DM5 has a three now and he's betting and it's probably just going to end the hand. Well, Matt Vaughn could decide to call on this board against this opponent. He I checked back the flop, right? I imagine you've begun an organization that so oh, it looks gonna like Matt's going to yeah. call. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Not crazy. Yeah. All right. It'll be an interesting river if, if especially five feels like he has to bluff. Oh, clubs come. So that's probably going to slow down everybody. Yeah. Check, check. If uh, both flush draws missed, could have been interesting. Yeah, check, check. The three is good. So I imagine you're the head of an organization that tries to get Mr. Mr. Head <coughs> off the shelves and out of the hands of the children. I mean, I'm not the head. I'm the treasurer. That's okay. definitely not the head. I okay. mean, I'm just, I also take notes at the meetings. I don't think of myself as They're the called secretary. Minutes. They're called minutes when you're September at a meeting. 10th, well, 10th birthday party. you know, when we get bigger, maybe. <laughs> okay. oh, Why are they called Ooh, minutes anyway? That's weird. I don't know. So, no, no, no. so what's the name of the organization? Oh, okay. It's the uh, anti-potato head the organization. <laughs> I thought, you were gonna, I thought you were going to do better than that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. Yeah. It's Apo. Apo. I like that. Yeah. There you go. That part's good. If I had said that first, it would have been better. But, yeah. you know, it's hard to make all this work perfectly. Um, anyone, any, any root vegetable that can't just, you know, show its face for what it is really doesn't deserve anyone's time. Are you including time. radishes? Is radish a root vegetable? Yeah. yeah. Then yes. I said okay. any root vegetable. I, I didn't just say feels most. like you shouldn't say that about radishes, okay. you know, based on what they've yeah, gone uh, through. Okay. That's that's a historical argument that I think at this point yeah, is defunct. I understand. Oh, there right. Was, we can't there learn, was a we can't there was learn, a point. We can't learn anything from history. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a gutter for BMW Blake. And it's top pair for Matt. Top two. Sorry, top and bottom for Matt. Top and bottom. Way way better. Probably not enough for anyone to be able to continue, but sometimes Blake surprises us. It's an $80 bet, and Blake cannot call. Wait. Fast enough. <laughs> Seems like it was fast enough. He thought about it for a quarter of a second. Got it in super fast. There are three outs to the nuts. That ain't one of them. Matt Vaughn's got to feel very good about his hand right now. It's yeah, it's very unlikely that he's behind. I mean, what are you losing? A slow played pocket fives? There's one combo. Yep. Somehow pocket threes doesn't seem likely. This is interesting. Blake is like really engaged in a discussion, not paying attention to Matt Vaughn at all as Matt is like thinking about it. And Blake just in the middle of the discussion very smoothly. Why so aren't you dead? Yeah. This is probably the first like real like. Sometimes when people are in a discussion like that, they uh, they actually have a very strong hand and they're yeah. trying to look like they're not paying attention. But not happening here. No, but like this was like. Matt had a strong enough hand and situationally that I guess he's sort of hoping for that. Yeah. Almost. Like maybe Blake has ace three and is like trying to make it look like he doesn't care. Come on, dude. Like you, you lost the fight already. Don't, not that your big old neighbors over here helping out. So, so like, so they're still screaming at each other. So, so we all spend the night. So the next morning, next morning we wake up and we're talking to his dad about it. Yeah. And, uh, and we're like, man, did that hurt when he hit you? And he's like, what, he hit me? And we're like, oh, you didn't even feel that? Yeah, I, I, I thought his dad was the toughest guy of all time for so many years. Wow. Lots of years. You're talking about Joe Jackson. Of course, the dad of all the Jackson Five. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I thought that's what maybe they were talking about. Yeah. Blake is a music professional. There is a pair and a gut shot for the rooster. Just and checks right on through. Now there's a pair for Dan and a gut shot for Blake. Let's see how much rooster bets. Rooster bets. Oh, almost full pot here. Still. Dan really has to call, yeah. and Blake's going to call as well. At least he closes the action and is in position. Yeah. Got those things to say. 
And good card for for Dan, although fabulous. It, it does bring the spades. Still a fabulous card for Dan. Dan doesn't have to bet, but probably should. Yeah, you got to try to get value from an ace or another jack. How about the th someone else with a jack? Blake yeah, has a lot of jack tens here and queen true. jacks. I don't see how anyone can really raise without uh, spades. Or better. Yeah. From a uh, value point of view, anyway. Like, I wouldn't expect Jack-10 to raise or Queen-Jack to raise. Even King-Jack. The front door flush draw came in and the Jack paired. I think Joseph should... I mean, the rooster, of course, should probably let this go. I mean, I can beat some things. Because I really want your opponent to not be able to beat much. <laughs> He does he find a call. The call. I guess he's putting Dan on 5-6. It, it was a really bad speech, if you, or deceptive speech. But a check through on the flop, Dan will bet 5-6 sometimes on that flop, but not always, I guess. Also, the rooster blocks 5-6 with his 5. Yeah. Rooster, at least it was cheap. I'll give, you know, like... Yeah. That may have part, been part of it, too. He's getting a somewhat reasonable price. Somewhat. And if you're going to make a mistake, you want to make a mistake where you're calling a little too much, you want to call in pots where it's cheap if you're going to call a little too That's much. That's great I think. advice. <laughs> I like to call a little too much. So when you call for $900 on the river versus 55, you know, big savings <laughs> or <laughs> not. You ha yeah. You or you're it's basically like, um, you know, was, Hasbro. Was too good of a yeah. price for well, yeah. The makers of Mr. Potato Head. Mm hmm. They and steal. They <laughs> steal from you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they put that spy in your home. <laughs> it's basically Big Brother. Yep. Unfortunately, Big like Brother. <laughs> <laughs> you have really <laughs> compelling points. Thanks. Top pair for BMW Blake. DM5 with. I don't think he's folding with the straight draw and the back door nut flush draw and the over card. Stewart has an open ender, but it's a bad open ender on this board. Yeah, he's going to call once, but he knows a 10 cannot be that great for him. Cool. Turns out it would be fine, but he can't be loving a 10. And of course, if he hits any sort of club straight, not happy with that either. Yeah. This is a card that should scare everybody a little bit. Yep. Blake can't really reasonably bet it. Stewart or DM5 could take a shot right now, though. I, I kind of like DM5. I think DM5 should absolutely take a yeah. shot here. He can rep a 9 very well. He has... Nines in his range completely. He's the kind of hand that would love everyone to fold. He has equity when called. Blake, of course, never going to fold with this. No, hand. way too good of a hand. This is a little unlucky for a DM5 that Blake had as good a hand as he did. I'd like to see if he bluffs the river, what Blake does. I'm going to guess Blake will find a lot of calls. The it club, is a club comes in. So and DM5, DM5 can now rep clubs as well. They both have a big club in their hand. So that could give Blake a reason to call a little bit more. Assuming DM5 does bluff, it looks like he's going to. And this is targeting a queen, I think. Yeah, I I think so. Blake does not like to fold a DM5 and a insta call. Three, four, DM5 four, not going to be happy about it. He finally got looked up. Doesn't happen quite often enough, it seems. Yeah. I like Blake, how Blake played yeah, that. Yeah, Blake played that well. I like the check call on the turn, and then it's not a great spot, but that's the guy you want to be calling, and you do have the king of clubs in your hand, so you block some of the yeah. most obvious flush draws. I think DM5 probably would bet trip nines again on the river when you're when he's heads up there, but so be it. Yeah. It's just a distribution call, really. Yeah. Here's the cumulative of winnings, and the rooster is up top. Blake is down below, but really not a whole lot of pain so far, except for our... The guy who only played the first yeah. 17 minutes, Mo, Mo the rookie, who maybe we'll see again at some point, uh, but probably not this session. The Rooster's been making some very conservative decisions, but it's been working out okay for him overall yeah. in the session, up over $1,000. Things often go well for the Rooster in this game, I will say. My guy. <laughs> Don't question the Rooster! <laughs> <laughs> Matt was so happy. Cold, cold. Spiked before he got across. Well, suited one gapper. Was it 35? Yeah. Not getting this through. Nope. Cold. Expect Matt Vaughn has almost uh, almost all of his uh, decisions here are calls. Yeah. Yep. A few three bets. And 
and oh, that almost seems like it's going to hit Matt Vaughn, but it doesn't. The flop's all over the place, but it's not all over these guys. Easy bet for the rooster. Matt could call because he does have the nut no pair here. He could call for the, the straight value of yeah. his hand and for the gut shot. The hope is that if he hits, the few times that he hits, he makes enough money on this kind of a board. Turns out he just takes the lead. That's kind of a monster card for yeah. the rooster, though. It is. It's a huge spot. Matt, I think, in a really clear check call spot. Double gutter. Rooster has to bet. the flush draw. Has to bet here for the rooster. 150. Yep. He's going full pot. That's a. I like that decision. Yep. It He's would make sense if he had a hand like ace queen or ace jack just to charge all the yeah. draws. It's or a very three, wet three board. Or three or jack jack or queen queen or ace ace. You even know? even ace king, he might bet like this. He might. And it's Matt might find a fold now. This is a tough spot for Matt. I think it's probably better to fold overall. Yep. You're often going to be f up against a, a big barrel on the river, whether he has it or not. And if you don't think you're going to be able to call. Yep, it's not unreasonable just to let it go right now. You're just hoping he has a combo draw or is getting out of line, basically. Yep. And you think to yourself, why is he betting so much if he's getting out of line? Does he really right. need to? And you block a lot of combo draws with the can clubs. Yeah. I like how both guys played that. Yep. It's nice. It's a satisfying <laughs> hand. It's weird for Matt to hit one of his best cards and then check fold after calling on the flop, but that's, that's, that's the poker, beauty man. and the art of No Limit Hold'em, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's, a it's like a, a whispering <laughs> desert wind. I'm just saying, like, why do, they, why do they give him the glasses, though? You know, like, the glasses make it so you can't really tell who he is, his identity. He has a, a deficiency. A, he has a cornea deficiency issue. That little green hat? I mean, who are we trying to fool here with that little green hat? He's I admit, I can't tell. When he wears the little green hat, I don't know what's not him. like the hat of an Irish policeman or something? Well, that's what I'm saying. Suddenly, he's like, you know... Got me up against the car and is asking for my license and I don't know what's happening and I don't know what I did, you know, and I'm like. So this is a this is personal for you. Yeah, it's you got, personal. You got arrested by a Mr. Potato Head. Cop. I'm not sure if I who it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we have an op we have a six for DM five, Stuart with Ace King. Stuart, very. It seems like a pretty good flop to bet, and then the stickiest guy in the world is going to call, and it turns out he's also ahead. It's pretty unlucky. <laughs> yep. Like DM5 absolutely could still be behind here. Uh huh. That is actually a card that may save Stuart here a little bit. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the hands that DM5 was behind with now are ahead. Yep. Open enders and gut shots that turn into pairs, along with gut shots that turn into straights. Yep. Seven eight. Looms pretty large. Seven five looms, looms pretty large. DM five going to protect his equity here. There's no obvious draws that didn't improve to a hand that's beating Stewart. I think he should just let it go. And once in a while, okay, he's got king queen or you know queen jack suited or something. But mostly, the range of hands. Also, are we going to really hero the river? Oh, Stewart looks like he might want to. How about that? It was a relatively small bit on the turn there. Yeah. Well, when DM5 inev inevitably checks back here, Stewart's going to be unhappy because he'll know he's probably lost. Yeah. W when you have Ace-King on that board and your opponent bets the turn, you're really hoping he bets the river. That means at least there's a chance that you're ahead. I mean, once in a while they give up, too. True. There's some give-ups. But DM5 has less give-ups than anyone else yeah. at the table. Well, sort's lucky he didn't oh. have, like, 10-6 or something like that. He might have fired again. He probably would have fired again with top pair. Oh, and then Stuart would have just had a decision, you know? Yeah. I call my fold. Sure. But you're saying you're, you're hoping he bets, so. Well, I'm hoping he bets because that means I have a chance, you know? Like, when he checks, the guy like DM5 checks, you're like, oh, he has showed on value, I lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're at the same. I guess you can hope he has, like, ace queen or ace jack sometimes. You can hope. I just wanted him to notice me. There's not too much there. Let's just say not only did... DM5 plus one, king six suited. He's been making it work all night long. Lionel Richie style. He wasn't mad. He was, just, he was disappointed. Just disappointed. Yeah. Like a disapproving. Sorry, buddy. I got called amigo that day, and you know that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> we got a limp pot. And two clubs on the board. Also an open ender for BMW Blake. DM5 and BMW Blake, both with real things. And getting Joseph money is always fun. That's okay. He did better. Still don't know who this is. That's Joseph okay. He did better than had quads the other day, so that was good. That's, I think that's it's not true. here. He's not here anymore. Five of clubs on the turn, and DM5 has it locked up. It is a wrap. I think Blake will probably fold on this card. It's 55 into 90. I'm and wrong. Blake doesn't look like he has the slightest thought 
about folding. I was I fact. was wrong. You better hope Blake better hope he does not improve. He does not improve. That's, That's a terrible a card death though for card. Death card for the flush here. Yeah. Okay. Turns you can out see the, the head shake, but he's gonna get the win anyway. There's almost nothing he can beat, but here's the hand. Here's the hand he can beat. No, no, I thought like, Oh, oh, I, 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 I have nothing. Like, hey, yeah. if, you're, if you're upset, I hope you have 8-10. Yeah. <laughs> you thought I was hoping for a win there? This is good. <laughs> That's it. That's good. No Shop guaranteed. <laughs> I bet 510. He's not wearing the jacket anymore, but how upset would you be if you found out that what Matt Vaughn had in his jacket pocket was a picture of Mr. Potato Head? Oh, like a... Won. What if it was like a selfie with him and Mr. Potato Head? Oh, man. The thing is, if that Potato Head... Dude is like wearing one of his disguises. I wouldn't even know it. Matt could be like, "This is me and my girlfriend." I'd be like, "Oh, she's pretty." <laughs> you know, like I just wouldn't know, because uh, you know, oh, I love her her little hat. It's so you're fashionable. Easily deceived. Uh, and of course, I know fashion as we've already established. Yeah. So I, I would really be like, "You're the fashion uh, expert." Of I love Portland. her glasses, her hat. She's really got a whole look. The potatoiness. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the uniformity of her skin tone. <laughs> Such bright eyes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, you know. Jack for a rooster top pair for DM5. That's it. The rooster might get away because there's so many players yeah. behind him. It's a pretty easy fold, I think. He's not even spades on the board. This is probably just going to be over. Unless someone decides to get cute. It's like so Matt Vaughn though to have like a fake girlfriend photo of him and like, but have it be like a Mr. Potato Head, isn't it? That's totally a Matt it's Vaughn. Like That's what on you'd brand. Expect. For for those of you who subscribe to his channel, you know what we're talking you know. about. So normal for him. It's like a freaking Thursday afternoon for him. The most normal of afternoons. <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. yeah. It might actually. Not Friday where you're getting ready to go home or Monday where you can't believe you're back. Don't do that. Wednesday's hump day. <laughs> Just Tuesday and Thursday. It's all <laughs> up for normal <laughs> days. Rooster, let's go 5-4 suited under the gun. A, a lot of players would play that hand. Yeah, but it's not a completely unreasonable decision. No, no I th actually, I think, uh, uh, you know, Poker Snowy would strongly agree. Poker Snowy is pretty tight though, right? Yep. But it's okay to be pretty tight, especially in a game like this. Yeah, with DM5 and BMW Blake throwing their money around. Yep. A lot of nothing for everyone. Bill could just take this down with a C bet. Very small C bet would do it, and we can't see it, but it happened. Or he just stared at DM5 in such an intimidating manner. But DM5 was like, I just don't want to deal with the possible physical repercussions of continuing this hand. And the physical repercussions would be like sickness, the shakes, stuff like that. I was thinking of Bill throwing a baseball at the table. Uh, which would result in the shakes, potentially, and sickness. From fear. From fear. Yeah, no, and also from getting hit by the ball. Really both. We're saying some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even more than normal. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to argue. You know, it's hour two of this four-hour uh, session. So it's only downhill from here. That's what you're saying. I'm just saying, you know, the first hour we were a little more on point. That's all, and that's fine. Pocket rockets. For Bill. And it's uh, 55. That's a large wow. raise. That is unusual. He Doesn't made it 30. I think he made it 30 or 35 the very last hand with Jack 9. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, yeah, well, DM5 five with a hand that's good enough to call. Yep. Just really has to call, even if he suspects Bill has a monster with this hand. And, and uh, Bill has a real monster now. Let's see if Bill checks this. I feel like a lot of players. No, Bill's going to continue. Wild drinking. I like it. Wild drinking. Super cash. And wait a second. He's getting DM5 called. He's going to make a play at this pot surely later on if Bill checks the turn anyway. So the information hasn't been entered yet, but there was a check, a bet, and a call. Bill's and Bill's going again. again. As he should. He's just hoping DM5 somehow has a, a worse set, which would be amazing. Well, he could take any ace, a flush draw, a nine. Yeah. Um, Stuff like that. A nine might just fold the turn. Yeah, I think it, I think it off. Exactly. But some, you know, DM five is pretty sticky. True. Still, I think it would fold against Bill. Channel ninety nine. I like that Bill did not check back the flop or something like that. I like that he starts betting right away there. Yeah. How old are you, Matt? It's just tough to get paid with a set of aces on a relatively dry board for the most part. Yep. You need your opponent to have an ace or something pretty darn good, and yep. he got paid a little bit. I mean, it's sort of a miracle he got any kind of yeah. C bet action there. Made over 100 bucks in that hand. Not so bad. Well, the songs that were on the jukebox. 
unlike ten dollars, you can buy things with a hundred. Yeah, like a burger. Yeah, or you know, a drink, combo meal at some places. Matt Vaughn not playing the nine seven suited. He's tightened up. You know, he gets that haircut and he changes his entire play style. Usually his hair is like Batiste's. And those of you who don't know what Batiste is, it's long and flowy. Yep. Like a shampoo commercial kind of yeah. hair. Yeah. Batiste is loving that, huh? Batiste is a shampoo and denim commercial wrapped up into one. Yeah. Lifestyle. It's a lifestyle look. A brand. Anyway. Blake does not continue. DM5 is going to take a shot with his... 10 high and it looks like Blake isn't convinced but now he is it's you know this is a little instructive I think for me anyway that DM5 everyone thinks he's super bluffy people are calling him Storks calling him on the turn with ace king and stuff like that still Blake checks to him he just bets on the king deuce three board and even if Blake suspects, you just get it. Just take it down a lot. Any, even with the super bluffy image, you just get to take it down a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, taking shots isn't so bad. Right. How many times have you been playing live poker, you bet, and the guy says, I know you have, I know I have you beat, and then he yeah. folds. I mean, it's just people don't follow through with their reads for the most part. Yeah. They're afraid to. Yep. Queen Jack for Blake. And a little singing as well, a little, little song in his heart. I'm going to have to mute that. I don't know if YouTube might get mad at that. Digital d decides not to put an eraser with ace 10 of diamonds, and we're going to see the flop five ways. I think that might be a mistake. He could raise well, it, it is disguised. get heads up. Well, it's top two for Blake. It is a gut shot for Dan. It's top pair for the rooster. It's bottom pair for DM5. Well, it's going to be easy for Dan to call if there's no raise now. DM5 calls a shot. The, the bet with bottom pair and a lot of players That's behind. Well, it's That's only $20. Pretty loose, though. It's going to give himself a chance to improve. Of course, the six isn't going to do it. He's only got the trays. No improvement for anybody there. Nope. Blake should definitely keep firing four ways. It's a really nice clean card for Blake. He bets big, 110 to 130, and that may fold out everybody. I don't know if the rooster can call this when Blake bets into three players for so much. Especially Blake, who I think with a combo draw would have checked one of these streets just historically based on the way he's played in the past. Rooster decides, looks like he thinks, oh, is he going for a race? Yes, he is. That is interesting. Maybe he's trying to get a cheap river, basically. The plan, if he gets called, to just immediately check back all rivers. Charging the draws yeah. as much as he can. Get Digital Dan out with you know his straight draws or whatever else he might have. Better, Actually, Digital Dan's going to fold a better queen a lot of the time, too, on this with this action. Blake, of course, has a very easy call here. Even though you are sometimes losing to pocket sevens and pocket threes. Right. Looks like Blake is not going to call. Looks like he is going to put in some more action, and that has got to end this hand. I'm not sure about this raise. This might only get bad reactions from Blake's perspective. I mean, the rooster. What are we hoping to get called by if we're, if we're Blake here? Queen seven suited, which somehow the rooster played pre -flop. Well, it was limped pre, so it's not impossible. I remember. I was there. <laughs> no, you didn't flop a set. Yeah. The other guy said he had top two. Queen ten six. Show me a card. Blake seems clear that Flip he's ahead, over. though. Second. Rooster shows a queen. <laughs> These guys can show one or both cards <laughs> in their hand. They are allowed to do it and kind talk about their hand in any way they want. Yeah. Blake should absolutely show a jack if he's going to show a card. You don't want to show? I have fun. The problem is showing a jack isn't great, right? If you choose to show a jack, yeah, I mean, feels like I think they made off. kind of an implicit deal. It's not a real deal. <laughs> Blake is going to show the jack. I yeah, it's the Jack of Diamonds. Yeah. But I would think Joseph's going to be able to put this together pretty quickly and know that oh, he cannot be good. Yep. And very quickly can fold. Why would someone show the worst card? They would either show no cards, you know, like... Yeah, I know. I I think the more important point there, though, is Blake's three bet on that yeah. turn card. I don't... I don't know if he's getting a lot of positive <laughs> results. Maybe he's trying to just charge the draws himself because it is a very wet board. Give Maybe the draws that waited to the turn mm -hmm. to raise, which it is, less, happen. is less likely in such a multi-way pot. Agreed. Joseph on the button is probably going to raise it up with a draw if he's going to raise. Yep. 
on the flop. That's my profession, so I appreciate but sometimes, sometimes he might wait. But I, I don't disagree with you that it's hard to get real value with that re-raise. Queen 10? No. In fairness, I don't think he was getting any more money out of Joseph anyway, unless the case queen comes or a four comes. Yeah, that's probably true. Or he could call lead the river on non-scary yes, cards. Yes, he could do that. But wouldn't you want to give the Joseph a chance to bluff, the rooster a chance to bluff sometimes? It's hard, to think, of, it's hard to think of bluffs that he has. I don't, I don't really like leading the river. I, f I feel like we're mostly folding out worse hands and getting action from better hands. I just think it's you have a much better chance to get called by top pair that way than three betting the Yes. Turn. DM5 already has this locked up. I guess there's no deuces left. They were folded. Oh, no, it's because there's a three on the board. Now I see. Oh, it could come running deuces for quads. Well, I guess it couldn't because yeah. we got the check mark. So at least one deuce was folded. I didn't even notice that it was a full house. It's just like, oh, trip. trip oh, and look at this. He's getting called. What a deal. Feels good to get called in this spot. Well, it's a kind of polarizing board. It's understandable why Matt might call once and see what DM5 does on the turn. The problem is DM5 is the kind of guy who will keep firing a lot. Maybe not in this board as much, but a lot. I don't know how Matt can just keep on keeping yeah, on here. Yeah, makes sense to give up. Yeah. <laughs> bad, it's a bad turn card for you. <laughs> DM5 shows the flopped boat. <laughs> Pretty sure I also folded a three. I'm not positive. Why do we call it a boat? Like I understand Full House is the original name, and it turned into a boat is because like houseboats. Like why? Why? Why is it a full boat in a boat sometimes? Maybe it's from when people were playing on the river, like the Mississippi River casinos. Oh, maybe actually because the actual river though, like the fifth the fifth card comes, the fifth community card comes, and that's the river. So you're like, oh, I I have a full house, but I'm on the river, so it's like I have a yeah. That can't be it though, right? That's that's way too much. It might be because people were just literally playing on boats. And they right. were thinking about boats. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. People still play on boats. They're just kind of like buildings that are boats for legal reasons. That was interestingly said. It's kind of what it is, though, right? I mean, those casinos that are on boats now would rather them not be boats, but they have to because of the state laws. Mm -hmm. Big whiff for the world. I like the M5 in this hand. To win it, just keeps on throwing bets at people, and he's had it a lot. He has. Timmer's thinking about it here. He has one back door. It's not really enough. Maybe if he had the king of spades, he could consider yeah. it. Yeah, I think the king of spades is, with the king jack with the king of spades is a pretty clear call in position. I don't know with his stack ratio, stack power um, ratio, maybe not though. How much does Timmer have in front of him? Seven eighty. Yeah, that makes it tougher. That's a good point. Everything just going smooth right now for DM5. Except for when Blake called him down. Except for that one time when Blake called him down. That's true. But still, overall, yep. you know, you're going to get called down sometimes when you're bluffing if you're DM5. Otherwise, you're not bluffing enough. And he's definitely bluffing enough. He's bluffing enough. <laughs> Easy open here for Mr. Vaughn. Even if he spells his name bizarrely, which is his fault. I mean, he could change it, <laughs> right? There's Damn. definitely worth the time and money. Mechanisms in place. Blake flops best, though. Okay. Matt does have the backdoor nut flush draw Matt and a backdoor straight draw. I like Matt checking here on this board. King is all over Matt's range. Yep. I think he should probably bet it. But he decides just to check and he does have showdown equity. value. It just checks through. It's reasonable, I yeah. think, how Matt played it. Limit his losses. This is, I think this is actually a, also a good lesson just in general. Is like You don't have to win every pot, especially when the pot is small. You just don't have to always take shots. That's more of a lesson for DM5 than you're not bluffing enough. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, and then you hit on the river. I'm okay with the, the way the hand, yeah, the hand played out. <laughs> I should have just not shown you a card at all. Then you would have definitely called. The almost Doyle for DM5. No, no, the true Doyle being the no, of spades. I didn't tell him. I, I didn't know. I didn't. I you said show me one. No, you said yeah. show me a card. Queens for Timmer. Well, hello, I, ladies. I, I Super cool how you said that. <laughs> Thanks. 
I thought it was really cool, too. Is that what you say anytime you walk into the room? Whoa, Blake is calling the raise with 10-6 off from a small blind. This is just like the weird num random number generator in his head went yeah. off, and he's like, okay, I'm calling. Luckily for Blake, he misses everything. He's now drawing wildly thin, and he pitches his cards in the muck. That was a strange call. Yeah. That was a strange call. It would be questionable out of the big blind, but the small blind is just like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I think you could fold that out of the big blind, except against very white opponents. Yeah. If you had a set of queens on your slow roll me, then you win. <laughs> then you played this very well, sir. <laughs> but I can't put you on queen seven or queen three. Apologize to those viewers whose eyes are being hurt by the rooster's hoodie. Please don't sue us. Can they sue us for that? Yeah. Of course they can sue us for Okay, that. please don't then. I dare you guys to sue us for that. Go get a lawyer. See what happens. When you get smacked in court, Rooster smacked. <laughs> yeah. We'll bring Rooster in as a witness. He's our lawyer. For the defense. He's also our lawyer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's going to both be a witness and our lawyer. That's legal now. If the rooster is involved. Yeah, in Portland poker. For he is both a man and a rooster. <laughs> so it'll be different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like a, a potato head kind of a thing. <laughs> but you're okay with this one. Well, yeah. If he's you're defending aligned, me. Because you're aligned with him. Yeah. Timmer's going to bet the gut shot and get it through. Is it just like on principle? No, everyone here loves bomb pots. Like bomb pots. Oh, mm. I'm neutral. Just uh, a lot more luck based. Put it that way. All right. $25 in. What does it say on Digital Dan's sweatshirt? <laughs> what is that word? Profits of rage. Rage. Okay, I thought that was a V. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So you thought, you thought it said beige? <laughs> well, yeah, but you, you, see, you could see the E. I know, but it doesn't mean it has to be said that way. Who would spell what you're thinking could be with Profits of badge? I don't know. I don't know. He didn't buy a puppy, so. Timber with Ace, Ten of Hearts. <laughs> Yeah, raises yeah, to 35. Poor, poor Lucky cried all, has been crying for like five days. For those who are, who are confused by who is who, the guy who said that was Jonathan <laughs> Levy. That was not me, Grant Dennison, the they pure good one. They went outside. They got their first time going outside today. Got a gut shot. I feel like Ace 10's always flopping gut shots yeah. this episode, man. What's up with that? It's not getting there, though. Well, it did actually once. Yeah, yeah it did for, for DM5, yeah. of course, but for no one else. It was not this Broadway gutter. It was the one-card gutter. Yeah, I mean, it's still a one-card gutter either way, right? Right. What I meant is it required only one card from his hand. Ah, yes. Yeah, there was a guy that was going to buy yes. our last female. Came over twice. Him and his girlfriend were calling it their baby. And Do you think and that and the rooster shirt says yeah. fight for old dick? <laughs> is that what you think? <laughs> I mean, it could be pronounced that. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> right? I mean, it could be. It could. I think it's great that, it, that he uh, he's fighting for that. <laughs> That's basically what Viagra does, right? <laughs> well put. I will tell you that the Just a limp from Bill. And... <laughs> DM5 not interested in limps. Well, he is often actually interested in limps, but not this time. No, not this time with the queen nine off. Bill and Blake going to see a flop with him. Blake does not want to see diamonds, obviously. Bill's dominating both hands currently. And he's now best. dominating in a meaningful way against DM5. Yeah. Expect a bet out of DM5 here a lot. There it is. I expect just a call out of Bill. Yep. Seems like the way to go about this. He's certainly not thinking about folding. He might be thinking about raising. I don't know exactly what he would be hoping to accomplish. Is he folding? What just happened? I don't know. I don't understand anything anymore. That was shocking. That is just, it's up is down, black is white, cats and dogs are living together. I don't know. What's ha I don't know anything. I have, no I, th I have nothing to say about I that. I feel like I just... I just drove really well, and I failed my driving test. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I did everything perfectly, and I still failed the driving test, and I don't know what I did wrong. Yeah. And the guy explained it to me, and I'm like, that did, I don't 
know it's like you, you just mean. had Those an words. incredible first date and she just never called you back. Yeah, anyway. I got like, ghosted. You thought, you thought you really hit it off. We did hit it off. We fooled around. <laughs> it was clear. There was passion and attraction. And then, and then he somehow folded the ace nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's really confusing. Wow. How does DM5 pull that off? He's a uh, magical, I guess. I don't know. That was magical. Rooster, this could be a, a three bet if he wants to. Looks like he is. I am about hearing it. from Myrtle that this yeah. is our final hand of the episode. Oh, okay. Myrtle has been doing a decent job. You know, yeah, you might actually retain her for another episode. She's done great this episode. Myrtle, you're you're, you're keeping you as long as you don't screw up this last hand. And we've got a three bet. I like this three bet. Me too. Bill lets it go, and Stuart is the only one left. I don't see Stuart calling. No, I mean, with eight nine suited, I think he would call, but seven nine is probably not quite good enough. And, and he, he just does said let it go. Myrtle, if you really want to keep the job, put up the winnings. Let's see how the people are doing. Yeah, we're going to need the cumulative winnings. Myr Myrtle. This is a key moment for you, Myrtle. Myrtle, we're rooting for you, but... Key uh, moment in your career, Myrtle. Oh, well. Okay. Oh! oh! Myrtle stays. DM5 is the, currently the big winner. Rooster's doing well. Week. See you next week.